There's a special kind of pride That you feel deep down inside A strength that seems to thrive In Lima, Allen County The American way of life To get in gear and do what's right And a break of a forthright link Called Real American Strength Lima, Allen County Real American Strength Forever moving forward without forgetting where we've been. Creativity meets technology where possibilities never end. Ohio's strong Midwestern know how, exploring innovative ideas. Deep rooted but always growing, ever proud of where we live. By my Allen County, real American strength. Keeping you up to date with what's happening in your community. Community Focus on GTV2. Thanks for joining us today on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker. For everything you ever wanted to know about fresh produce, you need to check out LACNIP Seminar, which is coming up on the 25th of September. Yes. And um, we've got, um, what, we're picking out fresh produce? Yes. Um, we're going to... Uh, teach people how to choose fresh produce in the store and also to know when they're growing their own uh, produce in their garden, uh, when it's at the peak of uh, freshness, when they should pick that produce, when they should leave it for another day or two, and how to tell the difference. Now, we're doing this because LACNIP is involved in the community gardens. Yes. What, you've got gardens scattered throughout the community? We have five community gardens. Um, they're all within the city uh, right now. We have the Martin Luther King Park Garden, the Emerson School Garden, the Freedom Elementary School Garden, the Liberty School Garden, and the Riverside North Garden, which is at Spring and Collet. Okay. You wouldn't think there's so much involved in fresh produce. You know, when the tomato gets red, you pick it, and isn't that pretty much it? Well, yes. <laughs> uh, oftentimes, folks can't tell when it's time to pick a melon, or uh, sometimes cucumbers, um, zucchini, you can let them grow to a horrendous size, <laughs> but they're not necessarily uh, good for eating when they reach that point. Um, oftentimes, it's often it's difficult to tell when to pick that ear of sweet corn, when it's going to be uh, sweet. Fresh, fresh, sweet, and uh, not uh, to the point where it gets tough. Who do you have teaching this class? Uh, we're having Gary Argyropoulos. He is the director of produce for Chief and Ray Markets, and uh, he's written a book on produce, was a uh, produce farmer in a prior life, uh, very knowledgeable, uh, lots of fun. It's going to be a great class, and he's going to prepare a festive pork stir-fry using fresh produce as he teaches us about how to choose it and how to uh, care for it, uh, and everyone will get a taste. And the class will be at the Bradfield Community Center uh, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. on the 25th. How do people sign up? Call Connie Dersham at the City of Lima, 221-5177, or you can email her at connie.dersham at cityhall.lima.org. Ohio.us. <laughs> That's long. <laughs> and I hope you were taking notes. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, if you go on to LACNIP's website, uh, you should be able to download the flyer uh, that gives you all the information about it. It's not limited to people who are LACNIP gardeners or uh, LACNIP or people or even people in the city. It's open to anyone. Well, it sounds like a wonderful time. Uh, it's going to be great fun. Uh, we will have information there from the Extension Service regarding canning and preserving. So if anyone wants that information, they can pick it up there. And in our previous classes, uh, the discussion has been just as much fun and as, form and as informative as the class itself because all of the folks who come uh, have stories to share and information and tips to share with other the people. Good, the bad and the ugly. Yes. <laughs> you can learn from others' mistakes often. <laughs> I know the gardens are winding down for the summer, but what about next year? If somebody wants to get involved in a community garden, how do they do that? Uh, 
by contacting Connie Dersham at the city. Um, we'll make sure that when we start our process, uh, they'll be involved. Usually we have an organizational meeting in March where we have a class on gardening, give people information about the gardens, and they can sign up. There's just a $10 registration fee to have a garden plot, and then you get a $10 voucher uh, to spend at De Havens on seeds or plants or tools or whatever you need. Good deal. It is a wonderful deal. Connie, give us date, time, and place one more time for the class. The class is September 25th. That's a Tuesday evening from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Bradfield Center, and you can register by calling 221-5177. All righty. Thanks for coming in thanks, today. Thanks, Ann. You're welcome. Connie Miller with Lima Allen County Neighborhoods and Partnership. When we come back, we will update you on the United Way campaign campaign right after this on GTV2. Reduce, recycle, reuse. Allied Waste Services in the City of Lima encourage you to live green by recycling all that you can. Recycling promotes green living by reducing the amount of waste materials buried in landfills. This saves money, natural resources, and energy. Keep our environment healthy and start recycling today. Allied Waste Services is committed to a clean environment. Contact us today for your recycling needs. Visit our website, republicservicesohio.com, to learn more about recycling today. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Lima Safety City today. Hello, I'm Chuck Eichelberger from the Lima Noon Optimist Club. Safety City is a very important part of the Lima community. The Optimist Club is renovating Safety City and it needs your help. Donations can be made by going to the website limasafetycity.org. You can also send a donation to Lima Noon Optimist Club, P.O. Box 428, Lima, Ohio 45802. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Safety City today. Neighborhood. Is. is that the house we were living in, Mom? Yes. Look at all the kids around here, Mom. I like this house. Hi, right, we're here about the house. It's rented. It's against the law to deny people the opportunity to live where they want and can afford. If you feel that you've been treated unfairly, give LACA a call and we'll look into your complaint. LACA's fair housing services are free, so call today and get the housing you deserve. 419-227-2586. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Welcome back to Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker, and joining me in the studio today is Phil Hain. He is the director of the United Way of Greater Lima, and they have just kicked off the 2012 campaign. Yeah, we're really excited this year. We, we, we think we're going to have a great campaign. And um, we kicked it off uh, out of the Lima Stadium with a football theme because our, our co-chairs are Bob and Grace Schulte are, are huge football fans and they're huge Ohio State football fans. So we thought it would be great to sort of start off with that. What so a fun campaign. Yeah, it is. It really, it really is. It's a great way to start the season. Of course, we're in the football season, so it kind of fits. Well, and the goal for the United Way this year isn't so much monetary as it is to get you involved, if you're not. Yeah, we, we, we really, last year, we, we, we focused away from the financial goal and focused more on just getting new donors, more people to participate. And we were really very successful, we felt, around that strategy. So this year, we're going to do the same. We're just asking people to participate, give whatever they can, it doesn't matter how small or how big, together it really does make a difference in this community. Why should people give to the United Way? Well, I think there are a couple things. One is we support an incredible number of good, strong organizations in our community. And, and they provide some really critical, vital services to youth, families, older adults in this community as well as the fact the accountability piece is really important in terms of making sure that people's money is really being spent in a worthwhile way. And we monitor the, the performance of the programs that we support. Well, it is so hard to know anymore with all the charities and all the scams out there. Are you giving money to a good organization and is it going where you want it to? Correct. And the other thing too is it stays local in this community. 
um, and, and I'm not putting down any other charities, but the fact is our money stays locally and it helps people right here in our community. What kind of programs are you supporting? Well, we support programs in three major areas. One is in the area of education in which we work a lot with um, youth after school, um, pro providing after school programs, but those programs are tied very closely with those children's education. And we try to align ourselves with the school systems in terms of what are their needs in terms of supporting those children staying in school and being successful in school as well as the fact we provide other recreational and fun things for those kids after school. So a lot of our programs in education are in that particular area. The second area is that of the area of health. And in that area, we provide a lot of services primarily to the elderly in our community. You know, uh, for example, making sure that the elderly get to their medical appointments. Many of them are isolated by themselves and don't have transportation. So we provide a transportation system by which they can get to those medical appointments, as well as socialization, being able to be out in the community. One of the stories we're sharing this year is about a family whose mother, who had a heart attack, and they were looking for a place where she could be during the day. Otherwise, one of them would have to stay home with her. And they were able to find a program that did that, that we supported, and they were absolutely delighted the fact that they don't have to worry about what their mother is doing uh, during the day. She's involved in activities and is supervised and is able to, and, and has been able to recoup most of what she, some of the, the, the issues that she, she, she had from the heart attack. So it's those types of programs. And then there are the programs that we call safety net programs, which are programs that are designed to meet <coughs> crisis needs in our community. For example, domestic violence, food, clothing, shelter. Those are critical things that we must, we must try and meet the needs of those folks in our community. Now, the United Way doesn't actually give the money directly to the people. You do it through different agencies. Correct. We do it. We, we have 24 partner agencies that deliver 40 programs. Um, and we don't fund those programs 100%, but we provide a significant portion of the funding for those programs. So we fund programs. We don't fund agencies. How much money do you spend each year? We spend probably about 85% of the money that, that we get in goes directly into programs, um, which we think is a pretty good number. We continue to work hard to increase that 85 to 88 to 90 percent. Um, but that, but so, so we're spending probably about one, $1.8 million a year, Incredible. somewhere in that range. That, that we try to push back into the community. And I know your, your goal is to get new members this year, but it's always nice to have more money, too. Oh, sure. So if we can top that. If, oh, absolutely. No, no, we always want to raise more than what we did last year because the, the, the needs are great, and uh, our partners are always telling us that we could always use more, and we understand that. So we always try to push ourselves. How do people get involved? Well, a, a lot of it is done through the workplace, okay? A lot of people give through through their workplace campaigns, through payroll deduction, which is a very simple thing. It takes you a little... You don't even notice it? They, they don't even notice it after a while, you know. Um, we have individuals, but people can just call our office or go on our website, and they can donate that way. And I always tell people, even if you can give a dollar a week, it's amazing how much difference that makes for folks in our community. Well, a $52 contribution is significant for any agency, and if it's a dollar a week, it disappears from your check without even knowing yeah, it. Yeah, it does, absolutely, yeah. And lots of people f feel that that's a really nice and painless way t to give, so. <laughs> it is. <laughs> give us your website address. I think it's www.unitedwaylima.org. Okay. okay, and then if they wanted to call you? Yeah, I know you're going to ask me my phone number. <laughs> I can tell you, I got, I've got my business card right here, so we'll pull it right out. It is uh, two two seven six three four one. All righty, and um, I'm sure you've got some of these great stories on the website. The yeah, yeah, the video is is on the website, and we're so thankful for those families who are willing to share publicly their own personal stories, and they are very touching. And you can see exactly where your contribution is going and meet some of the people who have been affected by absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, we appreciate you coming in, and good luck with the campaign, and we'll get you back at the end of the year yeah, and see how it's gone. Yeah, I'd love to do gone. that. 
Thank you very much, You're Anne. welcome. Thank you. Phil Hain with the United Way of Greater Lima. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community Focus on GTV2. Lima City Council has recently amended the city's vicious dog warnings to deal with potential problems concerning dangerous dogs in the public. The ordinance is comprehensive. However, here are some key elements that all dog owners and their neighbors should be aware of. Any dog that is considered a breed of pit bull is considered a vicious dog regardless of its temperament. A vicious dog is any dog that attacks, bites, or causes injury to a person or domestic animal with or without provocation. Not under control of the owner and secured with a muzzle and a leash of six feet or less in length, all vicious dogs must be confined when outside in a pen with a secured top and bottom or with the sides of the pen embedded at least one foot deep into the ground. If you're a dog owner and have concerns about any dogs in your neighborhood, visit LimaPoliceDepartment.com to find out more about the city's vicious dog ordinance. The fine for noncompliance is $150 per citation, and ignorance of the law is not a defense. If there's an emergency situation, call local law enforcement for immediate assistance. I didn't want to be touched. He said it would feel good, but it didn't. So he gave me a new doll and some candy. He told me not to tell anybody and that it's our special secret. <laughs> How do I make him stop? Say no. Run away. Scream. It's okay to tell an adult you trust if someone is hurting you or making you uncomfortable. Feel safe. Feel strong. Feel free. Did you know that if you have information about someone who's committed a crime or know of someone who is wanted by any law enforcement agency, you can call Crime Stoppers and possibly be eligible for a cash reward of up to $1,000. All callers remain anonymous. Make the call that pays. Call Crime Stoppers at 419-229-STOP. Crime Stoppers! Crime Stoppers! Make the call that pays! Crime Stoppers! Looking for these? You drive buzzed, could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. We're back on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker, and Kevin Haver is in the studio now with the Johnny Appleseed Park District. You've got two absolutely delicious festivals, and one of them is coming up at the end of this month, and it is the Apple Festival. It'll be our 23rd Apple Festival coming up September uh, 29th and 30th, the Saturday and Sunday, the last one of the month. And, uh, yeah, we have a great program lined up for the people here in Lima Allen County and the region as a whole. Yeah, what do you have? Uh, everything to do with apples, first of all, but uh, above and beyond the typical um, uh, festival or summer fest, that type of thing, we stick more to the traditional type things, the old-fashioned things, horse-drawn and wagon-drawn hay rides. We have a very large children's area, lots and lots of activities for kids, old-time type activities of choosing, picking out their own pumpkin and painting, uh, decorating that pumpkin with different things. Uh, we have uh, an area where kids can try to walk on stilts with guidance from adults <laughs> that are experienced at it, that are pretty good at it, that type of thing. But all types of old-fashioned type fun things for kids and adults to do. Now, regarding apples, you haven't mentioned the apples yet. What do you have apple-wise? Well, from, uh, first of all, our apple pie contest will be back once again, sponsored by Famous Recipe with cash prizes. Uh, uh, the cash, the top pr uh, prize will be $100, then $50, then $25 for second and third. But aside from that, all kinds of apple desserts and pie a la mode and dumplings a la mode. But then we also cook uh, apple butter the old-fashioned way. We don't dump uh, applesauce into the copper kettle and fake <laughs> it. We peel the apples on site and we boil down the cider and make apple uh, butter the old-fashioned way that will be available for sale. 
We do have uh, other things involving Apple. The Apple eating contest is actually quite uh, uh, hilarious to watch the youngsters line up, try to eat uh, an, a ring around an apple tied to a string. So it's a lot of fun for the kids and the adults as well. Do you have any um, old time crafting and things like that? Once again, rather than a typical craft show, a fall craft show, and there's nothing wrong with those. I'm not knocking those, but what we concentrate on are the old fashioned crafts. And we require the craftspeople that come to sell to demonstrate their craft on site. Like? Uh, basket weaving, um, spinning and weaving, uh, all kinds of uh, pottery. They'll do that on site. A uh, little bit of all of that kind of thing. There's some uh, glass blown type objects on site, uh, uh, signs, uh, hand carved signs, those types of things. Well, it's a wonderful festival. September 29th and 30th? September 29th and 30th, noon to 6 p.m., the Allen County Farm Park, which is, is at the corner of Slabtown and Ada Road, State Route 81, just east of Lima, uh, or just east of I-75 near Lima. Yeah, follow your nose. When you get close, That's you can right. smell we, the apple we, butter cooking. Yeah, we, we do have uh, signage out as well. Uh, I may mention that we started uh, school groups a week ago or so, and uh, we are nearly packed with school groups once again, which we absolutely love. It's, it's great to get the kids out, see those things, and have them hands-on uh, do a lot of the things we're talking about. Well, the Apple Festival is the big festival of the fall, in fact, the big festival of the year, but um, there's tons of other stuff going on. It may be fall, but you guys aren't winding down in the parks. Not at all. Our campground remains open through mid-October uh, in the way of activities. Uh, this Saturday, we have the first ever 5K. It's a twilight 5K for the park district. We'll be in the Ottawa Metro Park. We'll be running that uh, via um, luminaries out on the uh, park and uh, on, the, on part of the river walk as well. We're looking forward to that. We have a really big turnout for that. It's a little different twist on a 5K. And uh, again, we're looking forward to doing that. And then this past Saturday as well, we started our fall walking series on Saturday mornings. I led that first hike out at Kendrick Woods Saturday morning beginning at 9 a.m. And uh, we had about 50 people out for the first uh, of the fall hiking series. That's a series of eight different hikes across the next eight consecutive Saturdays, all in a different park, all with a different leader. So you get different parks, different information, and uh, different uh, perspectives on the park and or nature from those uh, various leaders of the hike. So that's well, become a very popular uh, series as well. I find it fascinating just to watch the leaves change week to week to week. It's amazing how things change out there. We were able to observe not only that this year or, or th this past uh, Saturday, but uh, uh, the wildlife changes week to week this time of year as well, where you have the uh, birds in particular grouping up for migration now and uh, just a lot of different changes, as you say. There's always something new to learn out in nature, and that's what keeps this job so interesting. Where can people find a schedule for these hikes? Our website is johnnyappleseedparks.com. That is by far the easiest, the quickest, and the best, but they can certainly call us at 421-221-1232. Um, but again, the website is the best. You have other programs going on in the parks? We have lots of programs going on in the parks, uh, lots of fall-related programs. Our preschool programs are as popular as ever. They fill up very, very quickly, and typically we have waiting lists. So again, those are all um, uh, found on the website and, and by calling the office. We do ask for pre-registration for a lot of the uh, individual programs so that we can, we don't get overwhelmed. Uh, we have enough uh, staff and or volunteers to uh, take uh, a good uh, considerate care of the youngsters in particular. Um, we need to mention the photography contest, which is going on right now, which is always huge. It is. It's a big photography contest that is sponsored by Alloway Testing. And again, uh, we have a lot of different uh, categories there. That information is in our newsletter on the website as well, but it's coming up. And uh, that'll be, uh, there'll be an open house to follow that up. Can't give you the date right off the top of my head, <laughs> I'm sorry, but again, uh, uh, it's time to get out there and get those photographs. That is not limited to Allen County. That's a, a question that I just had a short while back. Neither the photographers nor the photographs are limited to Allen County. There are categories, the landscape category, for example, where we have had winners 
the winning photographs from out west in the national parks and so forth. So again, a wide variety of categories there, cash prizes up front, and then uh, a lot of different uh, ribbons and, and uh, awards as well on the nature photography contest. And that's been going on for quite a long time. It's one of the oldest local photography contest that's around. Oh, I know it's wildly popular, so for details, get on the website. That's for sure. The other thing we need to mention is you have just started taking reservations for the shelters for the <laughs> coming year, and I know, I bet a lot of the ones, good ones for the holidays are already gone. Well, it's not just the holidays in, but it's the uh, Sundays. The Sundays, Sundays? Still up, yes, the Sundays are by far the most popular day. We took, uh, I believe it was 54 shelter house reservations the first morning. I go to work pretty early, 6.30, and that particular morning I got there even earlier than that. The parking lot was full, and in fact, I couldn't pull into my, quote, uh, chosen parking spot. There's a lady sitting underneath the uh, security light reading the newspaper, and she greeted me and I greeted her, but it's a very busy time. We are working to get that reservation program set up online so that people can reserve one year in advance to, to avoid that crowd, that rush that first morning. But yes, we are taking reservations and there are a lot of open opportunities left, so please uh, uh, get in there, uh, call us, uh, check the, the, the shelter out that uh, individuals want. Uh, we have 14 reservable sites now in the park district. And uh, again, they're very popu popular. Uh, the last few years running, those 14 sites have generated over 600 reservations per year. Impressive. So again, people enjoy their parks. They're using their parks, which is exactly uh, what they're there for. That's what the taxpayers here in Allen County want and support. And uh, we do our best to accommodate everybody that we can. Kevin, give us your website address again. It's www.johnnyappleseedparks.com. And your phone number. 419-221-1232. All righty. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you, Ann. Kevin Haver from the Johnny Appleseed Park District. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community Focus on GTV2. Here at the Humane Society of Allen County, we're proud to be the home of many great animals looking for many great homes. Over the past few decades, we've given thousands of animals hope of a new life. And we want to share our shelter's passion with you because we can't do it alone. To see how you can help animal advocacy in our community, please visit us at hsoac.org. It's never too late to help support the Humane Society of Allen County. Please visit us at hsoac.org. A message from St. Rita's and the Komen Foundation. If you're on Medicare, a yearly mammogram is covered. Make sure you get a mammogram every year. Schedule yours today. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Get your GED Pep Talk and find free classes at yourged.org. My joints ached and I was always tired. I was always cold, I couldn't concentrate, and my body hurt all over. My doctor told me I had lupus. Women of childbearing age, and especially African American women, are at higher risk. If you suspect that you have lupus, you should contact your doctor. You're invited to attend the local lupus support group meetings on the second Thursday of each month at 1 o'clock at Lima Towers. For further information, go to ConnectedHands.org. Because you're black, because you have young children, because you have a disability. If you've been denied housing for any reason, the Lima Allen Council on Community Affairs can help. It's against the law to deny people the opportunity to live where they want and can afford. If you feel that you've been treated unfairly, give LACA a call and we'll look into your complaint. LACA's fair housing services are free, so call today and get the housing you deserve. 419-227-2586. Welcome back to Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker, and Amy Odom is joining us in the studio today from the City of Lima. And if you don't know what's going on in the City of Lima, it's pretty much your fault because the city is making every effort to get the word out in a variety of ways. Hi. Thanks, Ann. <laughs> the city has uh, made some an enormous headway just in the last couple months that we're beginning to roll out um, on a more uh, public basis um, to the community. Um, some of you may have been familiar with our old website, which the mayor used to refer to as more as an encyclopedia. It was pretty static, um, wasn't very interactive. 
Um, the city of Lima was fortunate enough to actually win a contest, um, which I'm not sure is an honor or not, because they thought we had a great need um, to update our, uh, our ability to communicate with the general public. And through that, we were able to uh, get a new website design, and we're very excited about it. So what is different from this one compared to the last one? Our new website is still the same location, um, cityhall.lima.oh.us. But the difference is this one is finally more interactive. Um, this has opportunities for you to um, not only search information, but to have information sent directly to you. Like what? Um, we have some uh, great features, such as emergency alerts, if there are road closings, if there are um, other kinds of activities that you should be aware of for your own safety. This could be sent directly to your phone um, we also, or your computer. Um, we also have um, a dashboard that you can set up for yourself that will select the information um, available to you so you can select specifically what information you'd like sent to you on a regular basis from the city of Lima. And I know there are also comment forms too if somebody has a question, concern, problem. Right. We now have an online um, comment form which if you have a concern about anything from tall grass to a pothole to a uh, question about our parks, um, all of that information is put on, can be put on the same form um, and electronically submitted. Um, it will be responded to on a Monday through Friday basis. So if it is an emergency, we still suggest you contact um, the local uh, safety services. But it's a great way that um, if you have something at, at the top of your mind that you'd like to share with the city, a question, a concern, or even a suggestion, it can be now done electronically. That's so much easier if you're on your way home and you notice a burned out stoplight. Absolutely. You just send it off and you're done. Absolutely. Um, there are a lot of other um, great features about this website. Not only will you now be able to see um, the kinds of things that are upcoming events, but all the agendas for City Council, for uh, the Planning Commission, all other boards and commissions will be posted as well. So again, you can elect to have that information sent directly to you as an alert, or you can um, stop in and uh, kind of uh, browse our website for the information that's most useful to you. Well, it the, certainly is beautiful too. Thank you. Um, it is uh, much more interesting. There's actually an uh, interesting feature called um, postcards. If you'd like to send a photo of Lima to your friends or family uh, electronically, there's a gallery of photos that you can select and put together a little note to send forward. What a great idea. Um, we see this as really in as an opportunity to expand um, the information that's available to the public and available at your convenience. We used to do mailings, um, uh, as we all know, that's become more expensive and frankly more difficult to um, guarantee the information will be received. <laughs> so uh, we have not only our website, we have a quarterly newsletter called Our Community that will be coming out at the beginning of October, which puts a focus on um, positive activities that are occurring throughout the community in business, industry, education, and with our neighborhoods. Um, this upcoming publication's uh, focus is on government uh, and customer service, the new ways such as our website and other services that uh, departments are providing to uh, make it easier for you to interact with service. How do people get the Our Community newsletter? Our Community is also posted on the city um, website or you can request to have it sent directly to you electronically. What a great idea. Mm -hmm. There are also neighborhood notes if people are interested in what's going on in the neighborhoods. Yes, on a monthly basis we have a newsletter that goes out to all persons interested in neighborhood activity, be you a neighborhood association member someone new to the neighborhood or with a business or agency that's involved um, with the community. Neighborhood Notes is something that specifically targets the neighborhoods of our neighborhood associations and uh, neighborhood capacity building. And they get that how? That will also be available online or you can request that be sent directly to you electronically. And another thing you have that um, I know is getting a lot of viewings is your own YouTube channel. Yes, believe it or not, um, the City of Lima is on YouTube. Um, we have a dedicated channel and all of the um, City Council meetings are rebroadcast as well as the Mayor's press conferences which are held each Wednesday and other um, special events. You may see the Mayor speaking in Washington, you may see uh, presentations done in Columbus. So it's a great way 
to really uh, get more information about what's going on on a, on a current basis in the city of Lima. And you know what we haven't mentioned is GTV2. Absolutely. Uh, GTV2 is another great resource. Uh, we're thrilled to be able to um, share with the community through GTV2 and uh, not only this segment where you talk to um, city administrators but many other um, interesting things uh, that are going on and about in the community. Amy, if people do want to check out the new website, which has virtually everything on it, give us the address one more time. Um, the City of Lima's website is found at City Hall, which is one word, dot lima dot oh dot us. All righty. Appreciate you coming in today. Thank you for having me. You're Anne. welcome. Amy Odom from the City of Lima. We'll get a Chamber of Commerce update when we come back, right after this on GTV2. Crime Stoppers is still active in the Allen, Putnam, and Van Wert counties. Our goal is to assist area law enforcement officers to identify and locate individuals who have committed crimes. If you have any information about anyone who is responsible for committing crimes, please call Crime Stoppers at area code 419-229-STOP. Crime Stoppers! Crime Stoppers! Make the call and pay! Crime Stoppers! They're down below. Lines, supply, and utilities. We count on day and night. Sorry, Dad! And knowing where these lines are located before you dig matters. Sorry, Dad! For every project of every size, call the Ohio Utilities Protection Service at least 48 hours before you dig. It's fast, free, and it's the law. Because keeping Ohio safe... Daddy, can I help? ...matters most. Call the Ohio Utilities Protection Service before you dig. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Lima Safety City today. Hello, I'm Chuck Eichelberger from the Lima Noon Optimist Club. Safety City is a very important part of the Lima community. The Optimist Club is renovating Safety City and it needs your help. Donations can be made by going to the website limasafetycity.org. You can also send a donation to Lima Noon Optimist Club, P.O. Box 428, Lima, Ohio 45802. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Safety City today. Storm drains lead to the river. Our river is closer than you think. What are you doing to protect it? We're back on Community Focus, and in the studio today is Ada Ellerbrock, brand new to the Lima Allen County Chamber of Commerce, and we have Kevin Wiegand with Ultrasound Entertainment. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I want to start off talking about Connections, which is your event for CEOs that's coming right up. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's for mid-level to upper-level management, and it's a great time where they can network together and they can hear different ideas of those who have experienced um, growth and um, success with different topics each quarter. And this quarter we're going to be talking about marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be held on the 27th, and it's going to be at the Country Club. And we'll be there from 11.30 to 1 and discussing different marketing techniques that have been successful at the businesses. And who is going to be the speaker for that day? We have three of them. We okay. have Jennifer Brogy. She's going to be talking about social media. And then we also have Isaac Donovan and then Eric Siebenick. And they're also going to be talking about websites, QR codes, and Internet security. Okay. How do people register for it? They can register right online at limachamber.com, and they can also register by giving us a call at 419-222-6045 and let them know that we would like to be part of Connections. Okay. You don't necessarily have to be a chamber member to take part, do you? No, you don't. Uh, for chamber members, though, there is a discount. It's only $20 for a seat there. If you're a future chamber member, it's only $30. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah. And um, they should be registering right now because it's coming right up. Yes. If they can register by this week, we can secure a spot for them. If they try to push it to the next week, we can't guarantee that there'll be a spot available. But if they can register by um, the 20th, would be good. Okay. Uh, the other big event that's coming up, and I know we're still a couple of months out, but it's not too early to be thinking about Chamber Fest, yes. which is the big party of the year. It is. It's the largest uh, event that Chamber puts on, and it's a great time for networking, of course, but then also to loosen your tie a little bit and have some fun. And it's a big Monte Carlo night, and it's going to be happening November 1st. So Monte Carlo, you're bringing what, Kevin? 
Well, uh, traditionally we've been involved uh, with ultrasound special events. Uh, the Chamber Fest is, is, is a large event. Uh, we provide all the uh, blackjack craps, uh, the theme type stuff that goes on there. And um, we're, we're actually now, and you mentioned networking, an excellent way to network. And we're actually in our committee phase right now with planning, uh, bringing things together. And if you'd like to volunteer as a committee member, uh, there are a number of jobs throughout the night that uh, need to be taken care of. And that'll allow you to network even further and get to know people. Um, our staff from Ultrasound actually uh, provides all the games. And uh, the chamber volunteers and, and staff kind of help run the, uh, the, the auction items that go on throughout the evening. There's a, a silent auction and a Chinese auction. And uh, also something a little different this year, we're going to have a, a fan cave. And with the fan cave, it's, it's a prize giveaway. So with every ticket you purchase to Chamberfest, not only do you get the chance to come and participate and sample all the foods that are provided by all the area restaurants, um, you get to p participate in all the games, and, and the auction items then are auctioned off with the, the, the money that you would win, the funny money, the chamber bucks, <laughs> the chamber cash, and uh, with the chamber cash you can buy prizes, but everybody is entered into that fan cave drawing, and, and there's items like uh, a television, um, uh, Xbox, uh, there's some tickets to area sporting events. Uh, I think we've included Cleveland Indians and uh, Cincinnati Reds in there. We're, not, we're still assembling all the things, but uh, it's going to be a neat prize pack that you can do here locally, and then also maybe develop a fan cave of your own if you are a Browns or a Bengals fan or a Cincinnati Reds fan or an Indians fan. So I think that's the major four here in Ohio. So. It is. <laughs> well, this is a great event, and I know it tends to get sillier and sillier as the night goes on, and you start racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars in your pocket, and you're going around looking at all the prizes to bid on. And this is where you network, you team up with other people, and you put your money together. Yes. And pretty soon you've got a few million, and you can really buy some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, towards the end, yeah, you have to have a million dollars in order <laughs> to bid on the live auction. And it is part of our chamber members that have brought such a great event because it's through their donations and through their sponsorship that we're able to put on such a great event um, for a chance for us to get out and have some fun. And there is still a chance for people to be sponsors at this point, correct? Yes. Yep. If they want to be a sponsor, they can um, call by the end of this week. So by the 21st, we can make sure that they're on all the marketing materials. They can, of course, do it later, but to make sure they're on all the materials and have their name out there that they're supporting of such a great event, maybe by the 21st. Okay. Um, I know we wanted to talk entertainment as well. We've got dueling pianos coming in this year. Yeah, and that's something, actually, a new twist on the event, too. We always provide something entertainment related as well as far as music. And uh, at Ultrasound, we, we represent a number of live acts. And we do have a group, uh, it's Midwest Dueling Pianos. Uh, they're based out of Detroit. And uh, they're going to have a few artists coming down. And if you've ever been to a dueling piano bar, uh, whether it be Hall at the Moon or some of the other known uh, franchise chains around here, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. And between the uh, live auction items, we will have the performances by the, the two gentlemen coming down from Midwest Dueling Pianos to provide uh, some entertainment. Fabulous. How do people get tickets? Uh, they can get tickets by, of course, calling the chamber, 419-222-6045. Uh, and then they can also get tickets um, at limachamber.com. Okay, and uh, limachamber.com is also a repository for everything going on with the chamber and around the community as well. Yes, correct. Okay, well, we're looking forward to it, and we're going to have you back in a few more weeks and give us another update. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming in today. Ada Ellerbrock and Kevin Wieging from the Chamber of Commerce and Ultrasound. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community.